Well, as we enter in the 2019 NHL Enter Draft Weekend, that's going to be happening in Vancouver here. I figure I'll just do, this will be the first time I'll do it, a little bit of a mixed bag video with our Flames and Hitman here. Before I get there, obviously, you got to give my congratulations to the St. Louis Blues, of all teams, that uh, won the Stanley Cup there. I mean, who would have thought the St. Louis Blues would be the team that's ultimately hoisting the Stanley Cup there, especially back in December there, and that's when they started turning things around there. That's where I wish I had a DeLorean, and bring up to 88, go back to last December, and then buy a plane ticket, go down to Vegas, take a loan, plop a couple thousand dollars on the St. Louis Blues to win the Cup, and then go back to Calgary, drive up to 88 again, bring it back to my birthday, which Game 7 was my birthday. It would have been one heck of a happy birthday, but unfortunately that that's fantasy or in reality. Also, I'm not too sure if I mentioned any of my other Hitman or Flames videos, but we know that the Roughnecks and the Stampeders are defending champions for Calgary, but uh, actually the Calgary Inferno, the Calgary Women's Hockey League, actually won their Clarkson Cup there, and I believe it was their third, but fortunately the Women's Hockey League is, you know, ceasing operations, but, uh, you know, so I got to give congratulations to the Calgary Inferno there, so uh, that's a couple out-of-town off-season bits here, but let's get back and let's talk about the Flames and Hitman here and uh, what concerns with the NHL entry draft here and a little bit of off-season news. Here we are at the end of June here, so let's talk about the uh, Calgary Hitman here as I bring up my notes here. Obviously, uh, next season will be the 25th season for the Calgary Hitman here, which is pretty incredible considering, uh, you know, some junior teams, they don't last that long and move around here. Like, for example, the... Uh, Kootenai Nice is now going to uh, move from Cranbrook, British Columbia to Winnipeg, Manitoba, and they're going to be called the Winnipeg Ice here. So, yeah, next season will be the 25th season for the Calgary Edmund here, the silver anniversary here. And already the preseason schedule has been announced for both teams here. Start of the Calgary Edmund, they're going to be playing four games in the uh, preseason here and uh, in the press release here. Their first preseason game will be Friday, September 6th at 7 p.m. puck drop. This will be against the Oil Kings in Edmonton, but it will be at the at Downtown Community Arena, so uh, it won't be at the Rogers Place for the first preseason game. And then the second preseason game will be happening on Saturday, September the 7th, 7 p.m. puck drop. This will be against the Edmonton Oil Kings again, but Calgary will be the home team. But we'll be at the Seven Chiefs Sportsplex, where Tutina Nation is. You know, just west of the uh, city there. So uh, Calgary will be at home. We'll be playing on the Tutina Nation there. And then on Saturday, September the 14th, we'll be taking on the Mesonet Tigers. 7 p.m. puck drop on the road here. However, it's at the Community Center in Tabor there, which is kind of... Between Madison Hat and Lethbridge on Highway 3 there, if you're familiar with Alberta there, and get some good corn there while you're at it. And then the last preseason game will be on Sunday, September the 15th. This will be a 2 p.m. puck drop. Against the Red Rebels, we'll be at home at the Scotiabank Salad down there. So that's the Hitman preseason schedule there, four games. And then when it comes to the draft here, here, I've looked at some mock drafts here that there might be some Calgary Hitmen that could could hear their name called it this weekend here. Not many, not, none of the mock draft websites haven't gone to the first round here, but I know if I Google uh, NHL mock draft, I there's a you know there's a draft site web that lists like all seven rounds mock, and uh, they have Jackson Vandelist and uh, Mark Kastelik listed on there so they they could get their names called and who knows we'll see but uh we'll see if any hitman also gets some drafted this weekend last year we had a couple of hitmen that got drafted as uh right now riley stotts he's property of the toronto may place and then the last half year Romanko is property of the 
National Predators here, and actually in the offseason, the Calgary Hitman acquired Jet Wu here, and uh, he actually is property of the Vancouver Canucks here. So those are the current Hitmen who have their rights with an NHL franchise as of this video here. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the Calgary Hitmen do to build on what I can say had a fairly successful season considering they, you know, missed the playoffs and, you know, got to the second round of the playoffs here. We'll see if they can build on that, but uh, we'll see when we get there and start season two of my Calgary Hitman series. Anyway, now let's move over to the Calgary Flames here, the principal owners here. And just like the uh, Calgary Hitman here, the Calgary Flames also have released their preseason schedule here. And uh, there'll be eight games in total here. Not going to be starting in China this year like last year, but that was unique. So uh, the first game that the Calgary Flames will be playing in the preseason here. Actually, it will be two games. It will be a split squad here. So on Monday, September the 16th, we'll be taking on the Vancouver Canucks. That will be a 7 p.m. buck drop. One team will be here in Calgary at the Scotia Excel, though. While the other team will be taking on another split squad team for the Vancouver Canucks, but this one will be on the island in Victoria here. That'll be an 8 p.m. puck drop at the Save on Foods Memorial Center. So there'll be two games going on for the Flames and Canucks simultaneously on September 16th here. And then on Wednesday, September 18th, the Calgary Flames will be taking on the San Jose Sharks at home at the Scotia Pink Seldom, 7 p.m. puck drop. And then on Friday, September 20th, the Calgary Flames will take on the Empton Oilers, 7 p.m. puck drop up the road at Rogers Place. And then on Sunday, September 22nd, the Calgary Flames will be on the road at Winnipeg at Bell TS Center. 6 p.m. puck drop to take on the Winnipeg Jets. And then on the last three games of the preseason, Thursday, September 24th, the Calgary Flames will be hosting the Winnipeg Jets at the Saddle Dome, 7 p.m. puck drop. And then on Thursday, September the 26th, the Calgary Flames will be using needing their passports for this game as they'll be heading down to San Jose at the SBS Center, 8-3 puck drop, and then to wrap up the preseason on Saturday, September 28th, they'll be hosting the Edmonton Oilers, 7 p.m. puck drop at the Saddle Dome there. So uh, that's uh, the preseason schedule there for the Calgary Flames. And also, the NHL released home openers. And we actually know the first two games here because uh, on Thursday... October the 3rd, the Calgary Flames will be playing the Colorado Avalanche in Colorado. So hopefully maybe we can seek some revenge from that first round series early. And then on Saturday, February the 5th, two nights later, the Calgary Flames will have their home opener against the Vancouver Canucks. So once again, we'll be taking on the Vancouver Canucks to start off the 2019-20 season here and see if we can build on what we built on last year on having the best regular season in a generation and hopefully there was just a coming out party for the Flames you know we made a very brief cameo with the Colorado Avalanche there but I think here was June 25th that the NHL will release the entire NHL schedule so stay tuned for that in the next coming days here so that's preseason and then home openers here so let's obviously the awards were handed out, and uh, gotta give big congratulations to Mark Giordano as he did win the Norris Trophy here, and wasn't even close as he had 96% first place vote, votes to win the Norris Trophy there. First Calgary Flame or any Flame to win the uh, Norris Trophy here, so congratulations to him, and uh, you know definitely he had one heck of a season and. One of the big reasons why the Flames had the best regular season of the generation here. And, you know, not bad for being a guy who's just over 35, undrafted, and now the second, played the second most games in franchise history here. So uh, that was the award that Mark Giordano won. And then Sean Monaghan was up for the uh, Lady Bing Trophy, but not surprisingly, he actually went to uh, Alexander Barkoff of the Florida Panthers there. But... Sean Monaghan still finished third in voting there, and I think that just shows that, uh, you know, 
some of our young stars. I mean, Johnny Goudreau won the Lady Bing, and he's he's been nominated a few times, and uh, now Sean Monahan. So uh, some of these young stars are starting to get uh, recognition league wide here. So that's definitely a good sign and good name to you know put the face to the flames and uh, put our name to the league there. So uh, congratulations to both of those flames and. Uh, now let's get to the uh, draft here. Is uh, the 2019 draft here is here in Van is in Vancouver, and uh, the Flames do have five picks coming in here, as uh, they do have their first round pick, 26th overall here, and then they don't draft again until the third round, 88th overall. That's their own pick, and then uh, they do have a fourth round pick, 116th overall, via the New York Islanders. From the Travis Hamnick trade, so the Travis Hamnick trade will be completed this year, as there were picks and that were swapped a couple years ago there, and then the Flames draft in the fifth round, 150th overall. That's their own pick, and then in the seventh round, I pick 214th, and that's via the Carolina Hurricanes from the uh, Eddie Lack trade there, and when well, we traded Keenan Kanzik there, so uh, a couple years ago, so. Uh, I'll do my draft recap video here when everybody's all drafted and I'll recap who the Flames draft and actually I'll highlight if any Calgary Hitmen get drafted and then I'll mention where the picks that we traded away went to and what they got used for so I'll do that in my uh, draft recap video here. So anyway, there's also some uh, speculations here about uh, what's going to happen maybe trades here because uh, you know just like me going to Lake Louise for my first stop on my annual spring vacation just to see uh, how much snow and ice here another tradition is uh, Brad Treliven he likes to make a, a big trade on uh, draft day here and you know this is also the silly season you got all the general managers in one room and you know we're approaching free agency on Canada Day there which Obviously, I'll do my video on that when uh, that happens and what we did in free agency and maybe towards before the start of the regular season like I did last year, I'll do uh, an update video on all the UFAs and RFAs that we had that had to be signed or didn't sign here. But, uh, I mean, a lot of big speculations here is uh, could Michael Froelich and uh, TJ Brody, could they be uh, shopped around and possibly on their way out. I mean, there was a rumored trade at the trade deadline where ultimately the Flames did draft, or not draft, uh, trade away <coughs> conditional draft pick to get uh, Oscar Fannenberg from the uh, Los Angeles Kings there, but apparently there was a rumored trade that Michael Froelich and actually our first or this year's draft was off to the Minnesota Wild to get Jason Zucker and that didn't happen and there's some speculation he still has a year left on his contract. And it's been a fairly good signing here, but, you know, he's maybe falling out of favor with the team here. And we have some young guys coming up here. And also got some RFAs that he's a sign that, you know, decisions need to be made. And I still think Michael Froelich might be on his way out. And then TJ Brody, I mean, he's definitely been a great defenseman and not bad considering we drafted him in the fourth round back in... 2008 there and he's been a flame up to this point and he's frozen up through the ranks here but uh, I'm going to say he had a, I mean a lot of players had a rough playoff there but TJ Brody I think looked better overall this season playing again with Mark Giardell as opposed to the 17-18 season when he played with uh, Travis Hamnick there I think Michael I think uh, TJ Brody is uh, could be expendable here I mean he still has another I think a year left on his contract there, and he's making over four and a half million dollars a year. That I mean, guys like Rasmus Anderson and Yusuf Valimaki on the blue line has made him very expendable. And then also the fact that yes, right now the Flames do have fourteen million dollars in cap space if you got a cap friendly there, but that's not taking account of the fact that uh, we got some restricted free agents to. Uh, so I'm mostly Matthew Kachuk and uh, David Riddick. And then speaking of Riddick and goalies, that's not counting on what we're going to do in that here because the only goalie we have that's under contract for the 1920 season is John Gillies. And there's no speculation. There's 
what the Flames are going to do in net there. So that cap space is definitely going to be eaten up big time with Kachuk and uh, Riddick there. But, you know, we got to keep Sam Bennett, Andrew Mangipiani. The only unrestricted free agent for sure that I say the Calgary Flames should keep is uh, Garner Hathaway. But I also wouldn't be would be fine if they brought Smitty back on a one year deal on a fairly cheap deal. But uh, you know, there's lots of speculation here. That's why I think Michael Froelich and T.J. Brody might uh, could get shopped around here to free up some cash space and maybe get some younger assets or maybe some more draft picks at the table here. But Anything's possible there, and of course, uh, we still got the Albatross and uh, James Neal, which obviously the first season didn't work out there and still has four years to go at $5.75 million. But remember, $1.3 million for the next eight seasons before you say, well, you can just buy them out. Well, that's not, I don't think Calgary's going to be willing to pay that price, and you know, hopefully, maybe you'll have another opportunity to play in the top six there, but it's if we don't get to trade them. And, so you're going to buy out one player that I could possibly see being bought out is uh, Michael Stone there because we are pretty deep in defense. And Stone just has a year left at $3.5 million there. And, I mean, he had that blood clot issue for much of the season there. But uh, buying him out would uh, basically uh, only spread out $1.3 million over two seasons because it's well, that's just rough math right now. But, I mean, you take... You take two thirds of what he's left owed and spread it over double the term there. So that's how I came with that figure for Michael Stone and how I came with that figure for James Neal here. So that's just my personal speculation on players here. I mean, there hasn't been as much off season videos for the Flames this year, but that's because last year we decided to change coaches and made some big changes here. So, uh, so like I gotta say, there'll be one video for sure that I'll do is our Flames draft recap video here and if there's a big trade that warrants a big trade, like Dougie Hamilton trade, for example, I'll make a video on that, give my reaction and take on that trade if it happens here. So, uh, and then now speaking of the draft here, there's two guys that we drafted in 2017. And when you draft someone, you got two years to uh, sign them to a contract or you lose their rights. But two guys that will be re-entering the draft this year that the Flames drafted back in 2017 is Zach Fisher. He was drafted 140th overall, so we didn't sign him. And then the RTN Joy, who was 171st overall there. He uh, He's also back on the draft table here, so who knows what their futures have in store. But it would just be something I doubt we're going to draft him again unless uh, they thought they were close and really wanted to keep him and couldn't have a dollar figure. I mean, in a salary cap world, I mean, entry level deals are, you know, standard to make it fair for anyone to pick up, you know, the top prospect there. So, watch for those guys, see where they get drafted if they get drafted this weekend. And then one guy that we were hot after a couple of years ago who played at Union College with Spencer Fu there, and it seemed like he had a, he had an upside there, and he did play a couple of games down the stretch there and scored a goal to wrap up the 17-18 season there when we were out, but then he didn't stand out in camp this past season and never got called up at all. And I think he got pushed down the depth chart, especially with guys like uh, you know, Angel Montefiani and uh, Dylan Dubé showing that they're ready to chill ready. But eventually Spencer Fu, he signed with the Red Star Kulin of the KHL in China there. So uh, yes, Fu is... Uh, no longer with the Flames here, so uh, that's basically just my mixed bag here on the uh, Calgary Flames and Calgary Hitmen on some off-season news up to the answer draft here. So, uh, of course, if you like everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along here, and there'll be a, at least a draft recap video, and if Brad Trelevin, you know, once again makes a big trade, uh, I'll make a video on that to get my take on it. If there is one, there's lots of speculation out there. But, uh, I mean, hey, half the team, half the league is uh, also aggressively looking for trades if you read all the gossip and everything that's out there. But, 
you know, again, my personal speculation, I think a couple players could be on their way out to try to maybe free up some cast space and uh, make some room for younger prospects because that seems to be how you build a team and win a championship. It's not like the old days you can stack up teams and it's not like the NBA where you have a smaller roster. And oh yeah, speaking of the NBA, congratulations to the Toronto Raptors on winning their, uh, you know, first ever NBA title there. So yeah, it's been a lot of stunning championships here the last few years, which I think I might make a video about that down the road. But uh, back to hockey here. I mean, you just need that right mix of, you know, youth and experience and you just got to manage your cap here and hope everything works out on uh, winning the Stanley Cup there. I mean, dynasties are likely more of a thing of the past now because you always got free agency and draft and then you say you got to manage your cap there. So anyway, I'm going to say thanks for following along here and I'll see you in the next video and who knows, maybe there might be another big trade video coming and or at the very least we'll recap uh, who we drafted here and hope that these players we draft will be big names that will be cheering on down the future and maybe uh, you know set record books uh, we can dream at this point so I'll see you in the next video